quoting the great Socrates, and the false words are not only evil in themselves, but they affect the soul as painful. For those who do not know me, my name is Brianna Chilio, and I'm here to speak on behalf of my father, Bill Chilio, who was our fire chief for 21 years. I'm also here as a concerned resident of Bridgeville, and I essentially just want to bring up to the council some of the things that have been bothering me uh, and the community. When I was asked to speak on behalf of my father in the fire service, I immediately jumped to this opportunity to be able to stand in front of his peers and his enemies to speak on what a great firefighter and person he is. Sure, I may be a little biased, but I've only been, I've, I've also spoken to his peers and they've all responded to me with almost the exact same words. I first want to share some memories um, of my father being fire chief for the past 21 years. First and foremost, thank you. Although you've missed events, birthdays, and holidays for this community, which isn't easy, but without your sacrifices, this town would have been in trouble. Thank you for your endless dedication and your love for this town and the people living in it. You truly are a one-of-a-kind person, and we have been honored to have you serving us. It is something that I know you don't get to hear often from those who do not understand the dedication you've put in, so I wanted to tell you thank you. I want to thank you for your, not 31 years of service, but 34 years of service. So thank you for recently removed from the Bridgeville Volunteer Fire Department by fellow members. The reason of action occurred during a grant request when an error was made in typing in the proper email address on the state's behalf. This is a grant that would help benefit our department. When an email is typed in wrong, even I would appreciate it if you don't grant, thank you. Even by one letter, messages will not be received. This was voiced to the other members uh, and it was then fixed and information was sent over. Members of our current fire department were seeing accosting citizens of this community in a local restaurant in Park on May 4th, 2019 after this year's cash bash. They were being accosted only because they knew and were in relation with my father. They were also my family. This is a public facility and I ask why? Why did you do this? It's also been sent that letters were sent to people uh, who also knew my father saying that they were no longer allowed to be on premise of the volunteer fire department unless for voting. And I do ask what your probable cause was. This is a public facility. And as being a public facility and to being a virtual volunteer fire department, do you have probable cause to keep anybody from stepping on a premises? A volunteer is a thankless, painless <coughs> job. So I always thank my volunteers. So thank you volunteers. stating that phone records were being um, requested on the chief so that nobody was in contact with my father. This is a violation of volunteers' personal lives. They do not get paid for, for you guys to request phone records. Community day was something that my father absolutely loved to do. Um, he would walk up and down the street, introduce himself. I'm sure all of you have seen him walking up and down the street. He took pride in Bridgeville and always wanted the best for Bridgeville. Um, and he just loved everybody being here in this one community. His goal in life was to have one community, one fire department, one police officer, or one police department, one EMS, one community, all of the residents, all <coughs> one. I don't think that that's the case anymore. On community day, I was told that a resident was with his granddaughter and they were enjoying the day and they wanted to see the fire trucks so badly. But not one firefighter got up and arose to this occasion to show them the trucks. And this is something that my father loved to do, only because he saw us as children playing on the trucks and giggling and laughing. And it's so cool to see, and nobody stood up. They sat on their phones. I want to share with you some emergencies that impacted him um, and changed his life. And a lot of you can remember Chestnut Street. May of 2003. A house exploded. <coughs> this occurred on the weekend of Cash Bash 2003. My father spent 10 days of this call. Go come home and sleep, eat, go right back. He never stopped. 
And the first words that came out of his mouth when I asked him about a call that changed his life was this one, and he said, I shouldn't be alive. He said that the feeling that he felt from the blast of the impact only being 30 feet away from a house is something he never wants to feel again. Something he doesn't wish on anybody to feel. <coughs> he said, the feeling that shook me from impact is one I can't describe and one I wish to never feel again. But there was no time to stop to think of his life. There were people that needed to be saved and the fire needed to be put out. He had to push on. His focus changed. What did he need? Who did he need? And what was the next step? All of this, I mind you, occurred again on the cash bash night. Neighboring department fire chief said, you didn't miss a beat. I could see the terror on your face, but you didn't stop. You knew what needed done, and when you called over the radio for help, we all heard you. This was the first naturally causing gas explosion that ended up involving people from across the country to come in and investigate. And I don't know if you guys remember, but day was seen in, at night for three days while the gas burned in the air. And then we talk about the floods and the changes of the, you know, Baldwin Street always flooding. And he remembers the Budweiser truck in 2013 that was submerged in water and one resident found it to be a safe zone. She stood on that truck with her cat until being rescued. He said if that truck wasn't there, the waters would have pulled her to her death. We started to change protocol in Bridgeville for the floods. And then the flood occurred last year. Multiple departments came in for mutual aid with boats. Over 40 to 50 people were saved alone by boats. The protocol changed. The creeks were dredged and potential flooding of ritual was decreased significantly. Even changes to the high rises, the protocol in getting to an emergency that occurred in a high rise was built by my father. We got a new ladder truck for that. He was able to find funding to, for the ladder truck. And if I don't know if anybody knows this being a virtual resident, then my father always had your best interest in mind. Because with having a ladder truck, that keeps our home insurances down. He too is also a resident of Bridgeville. He also built mutual aid. By building mutual aid with our neighboring departments, we were able to call in for help and vice versa. Coverage has always been found for our town when Bridgeville would be out of commission even for a few hours. And none of this was for social events. Bill never over-exaggerates emergencies, someone said. He knows what he's up against and what he's not. He knows when help is warranted and when it isn't. My father worked endlessly to ensure that Bridgeville was up to standards with their practices. You can never stop learning, and that's something he totally understood. One of his mentors said that he always put Bridgeville first. He wanted the best for Bridgeville. He wanted the best fire protection services for this town. That's something he took pride in. He also created the Char West Chief Organization, where he would get together with 20 different communities and their fire chiefs and their firefighters to instill the best fire protection services around, to make it uniform. What did you see that we didn't see? How can we make this better? How should we expect this in the future? Can I save more lives with this? When I sat down and began writing this speech, I quickly realized just how much my father has done for this community. There's also so much more that he does every day that we don't even notice. He took a job at our Bridgeville Borough so that he is more available to this community. He has loved and enjoyed serving this community for 34 years. He thanks this community for allowing him to serve and protect. The friendships and families he has gotten to know have truly changed his life. The words of encouragement and support that were given to me on behalf of my father have all been so heartwarming and have truly touched me. He has taught my family and his fellow brothers of the Bridgeville Volunteer Fire Department many lessons, some of which are to expect the unexpected. And he appreciates every single one of them. Nothing should be or can be taken for granted. Sorry. I am asking the community to please continue to support our first responders, volunteers, and each other. I ask that the Bridgeville Borough take into consideration the changes that have broken the trust between the residents, the mutual aid departments, and our own Bridgeville Volunteer Fire Department. How do we ensure that our safety is of the new chief's utmost priority? When the trust has been broken between the community? How do we ensure that our safety is the number one priority over social media? And how do we know that they will be there when called, even if we've had relation with Bill Julio? Am I going to be safe? I've been told that after 20 years of service, you become a life member. My father has been 34 years fired, fired. His life membership has been taken away. I asked the council, can this happen? After life membership of 20 years, can you take that away? 
My father would like um, me to tell everybody again to thank you. And he wants me to remind all of his members that he fought side by side, that you guys were his brotherhood. And he would have done anything for you. He helped you find jobs. He helped you move in and out of your houses. He helped you when you had marriage issues. He would do anything for you guys. And the betrayal sets in. I end this with the fireman's prayer. When I'm called to duty, God wherever flames may rage, give me strength to save some life, whatever be its age. Help me to embrace a child before it is too late, or save an older person from the horror of that fate. Enable me to be alert and hear the weakest shout and quickly and efficiently put the fire out. I want to feel my calling and to give the best in me, to guard my every neighbor and protect his property. And if according to my fate I may lose my life, please bless with your protecting hand my children and wife. <coughs> And the last thing that I'm going to say is the firefighter's oath. My duty is to protect those I serve from whatever danger they may face, whether it be fire, demon, or angel. No matter the danger, I will protect the people to the best of my ability. I am but a servitor of the people. My duty is to those who I serve and to no one else. I serve the people without fear, without remorse, without fail. My duty is to the people. By my fireman's oath, I am bound to protect those who are in danger those in times of need, those who I would serve. My father has followed all of this. Thank you, Dad, for your 34 years of service to this community. Thank you. Hello, neighbors. My name is Brad Amato. On behalf of the BBFD, um, beautifully written brief. There are so many things about that that um, from a family of firemen, that are so true, that there are selfless years of, of dedication. The Thanksgivings that I missed, I, I, I feel you. Your dad's been on longer than I've been a lot. Uh, when you, when you want to cry, I want to cry. I remember all these same things. Uh, I remember the, the uh, fireman's memorial I used to go to as a little kid, and hearing the fireman's prayer, thinking, my dad might not be here tomorrow. He might not. But, <clears throat> so, I can really, <clears throat> Uh, mine is much shorter, but here's just a couple of things I have to remind everybody in the room. Uh, and mostly, you know, if there's a lot of fire uh, people affiliated in the room, you know exactly what I'm about to say. But uh, if you, you ever heard, remember that commercial that aired about five years ago, uh, due to the real thick accent, said, uh, riding a motorcycle is like chocolate. You can't describe how it tastes. That's kind of how I think the brotherhood is. Either, either you're in it or you're not. You need to describe chocolate or you can't. You either either tasted it and you know, or you don't know. Firefighting has long been a business of tradition and pride. Most firefighters have an unspoken loyalty and more than a friendship referred to as a brotherhood. This brotherhood, for example, is what takes a fireman from a community, even states away from a, for a funeral of a man they never even met. Though not a stranger, but a brother. You never know who will be there, but you know that they will. Oftentimes it's passed on from generation to generation. All aspects of the trade are, for the most part, passed on like a family recipe. At this point, Bridgeville Volunteer Fire Department are thankful and grateful for all the things that we've been passed on uh, on behalf of Bill. Be assured, Bridgeville is in the hands of the most talented, compassionate, respectable team today as ever. To be honest, I wish Bill was still a member and continued to give. He has an unprecedented amount of experience to give yet. Today, BVFD has grown membership by double digits this year, repaired critical mutual aid relationships, and more community engaged than ever. If you ever have this, even the slightest bit of doubt, I urge you to join our fire organization and experience it for yourselves, or remain silent. The hours of sacrifice not only we the members, but our spouses and our children endure are without a doubt what we signed up for, but we couldn't have it any other way. BVFD will not let our reputation or be tarnished or infringed in any way. The past is just that and behind us. Join us in our vision for growth and for a positive future. Thank you. some internal changes. Changes that never affected our response times or interfered with calls being handled. 
Actually, if anything, things have been better the morale and the training and the members. Former Chief Bill Chilio resigned and Ray Costain became Chief. Bill was a very knowledgeable and great firefighter, which we've never stopped saying. Sometimes it's just time for a change to happen. Ray brings with him a vast knowledge of the fire service and is still training and learning new things every day. He has been serving the community for 13 years at Bridgeville Volunteer Fire Department. We went from being an I department to a we or an us department. It's not about one person handling things, it's about a whole team of people doing it together. The key to success is teamwork and we're achieving that together. I would like to invite all of you and all the council members to our open house on September 29th to meet our members and the chief, tour the tracks, the station, talk to the members, learn their training skills and ask them questions if you want. In closing, I would like everyone to remember, our members are volunteers. They risk their lives every day for the community out of the goodness of their hearts and don't want anything in return. They miss family meals, holidays, birthdays, and full nights of sleep on many occasions. When the task at hand becomes more of a chore than the heartfelt duty, the community suffers. Our goal is not to ostracize or villainize anyone. Our goal as a department is to create a happier, healthier, and more engaged department for both our members and our community that rely on us. We are committed and will stay committed to our community at all costs. Alone we can do so little, together we can do so much. Uh, Donnie Drew. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Don Drew. For those who don't know me, I am a second lieutenant currently with the Bridgeville Volunteer Fund. Bridgeville BFD has undergone a complete culture change over the last 90 days. Previously an I or me department, we have seen a complete transformation into a we or us department. As a whole, the fire department is now functioning as a strong family unit. Now our members can routinely be seen spending their off times staffing the station in the event that calls dispatch. Because of this, we have seen a drastic increase in response times as well as member turnout. For example, Friday, August 9th, 2019, there was an auto accident on the intersection of Lesnet Road and New York Street around 10.30 p.m. We had a total of 14 members on scene within six minutes of dispatch. Outside of calls, our members are spending much more time together, connecting and getting to know their brothers and sisters on a more personal level. Two days ago, we hosted a member appreciation night where roughly 30 members including their spouses and parents, spent the evening at Scott Bowl swimming, eating, and bonding together. Due to the changes, we have also seen a surge in recruitment as we have accepted 11 new members in the past 90 days. <clears throat> and the applications are continu continuing to come in. The fire department has also placed a new value on education and professional development. Members now have ample opportunities to grow on an educational level through many new trainings and courses previously not available in-house. Coordinated by Chief Costings, Chief Costing, I apologize, <laughs> members went through emergency vehicle operator training. Teaches, the, the course teaches students about laws to operate an emergency vehicle and skills necessary for safe driving. And we recently went through CPR training and we've obviously been doing a lot more joint training with our neighboring departments. All of this has transpired over the last three months and I'm personally excited with, for all of these upcoming classes that we are planning and the many joint trainings with even more fire departments in our local communities. In conclusion, 2019 marks my eighth year with BBFD and second year as the lieutenant. My confidence in my abilities to be the best officer officer, <laughs> mentor, and brother have soared over the last 90 days, and I can only see it continue to grow under all of my officers. <clears throat> I'd like to thank the members of council for letting me speak tonight. Thank you. Have you ever lost respect for someone? You don't hate them, but you don't feel the need to associate yourself or anything to do with them. Well, it's with a sad heart that at this point in time, I have to say yes to this question. I've been affiliated with Bridgeville Volunteer Fire Department for close to 20 years now, and I've seen my fear of changes in the department. 
Unfortunately, we are facing someone or someones who is trying to steal our reputation, honor, dignity, and morale. I hope that I can speak for the majority of the Fire family when I say we are not going to stand idly by and let this happen. As in any organization, a portion of a position of office is not guaranteed, nor is it entitled. Whether it's a chief, president, or secretary, it is my belief that for anyone to hold any office, there must be trust, faith, and respect that that person is capable of your well-being, or in reality, your life. And when even one of these qualities is questioned, there must be a change. At this point in time, I believe that Chief Ray Coste meets all those qualities. A leader not only leads, he teaches, and allows his team members to grow to their full potential. I would just like the council members and the community itself to know that our commitment to Bridgeville is as strong now as it has been for the last 100 plus years. And in ending, I just want to say that confidence is silent, insecurity is loud. Thank you for listening. Applause. We want one minute. I'm going to let one. Please go ahead. It's how we do all That's why I signed up for us. Well, you're not about your next session. Well, next session. <laughs> uh, Jim Alter. Uh, my name is Jim Alter. I'm the president of the Bridget Walter Fire Department. First, I want to thank the council for letting us uh, speak here tonight. Um, by no means do we ever want to downplay the uh, improvements and training accomplishments and just overall all the good that Bill has done for the fire department over the years, over his 30 plus years of service. That was never the question. Um, we all looked up to him as a mentor, myself included. He's younger than me, but I looked up to him a lot. Um, we talked a lot. Um, he's a very good guy when it came to running the scene and um, knowing what to do and how to mitigate hazardous situations. I mean, he, he's a very good guy. Um, but, it, you know, the members who voted to remove him, or asked him to resign, because he did resign, we didn't kick him out, he resigned as the chief. Um, the same people that have been with him for the last 20 years. Um, it, that's basically what it was. I mean, if you guys don't get reelected, you don't get reelected. We move on. So, that's what we were sort of hoping it would happen. But, uh, in the last three months, we've added seven new firefighters. <clears throat> um, entire roster. We added one last year. We added seven in three months. So there's a new wave of things going on. We added five new associate members. You know, wives and spouses and people from the community they don't necessarily firefight, they want to be part of the fire department. Um, as everyone spoke, it's a common thing. Morale is up. Um, Bill was a very good leader when it came to the scene, but he was not a real good people person, and over time, it just sort of took its toll on everybody. And we got to the point where, um, you know, the whole fire department was going to walk out if he had to resign. We had guys not coming to calls and he was going to be on the scene. That's a huge problem. I mean, that's, uh, for whatever reason, someone's not coming to the call is a problem. But if you don't come to the call because the chief's there, I mean, it needs to be addressed. We've had numerous conversations with him, hoping to at least apologize publicly to the department in our meetings, not publicly, in our meetings numerous times and you know he was making efforts to change but it, it just got to the point where people were tired of you know the harassment be it uh, you know verbally emotionally in other ways that we can't speak of here um, <clears throat> we never had standard operating procedures we're in the, probably the, the most dangerous profession there is in the world and we had no procedures to guide us it was all in people's head and it was supposed to be an ox. Well, we never had any paper to learn it. And if you, didn't, if you did something wrong, you got crucified. Um, we had SOGs written up under our new chief in less than a month. And they're actually at the print, they got printed today. Um, that everyone's going to have, and everyone's going to know inside not. Um, you know, we all, they all know their jobs, but there's so much to it, there's so many different aspects that uh, you need to have rules follow and guidelines to follow, which we have now, we never had before. Um, we're getting good turnout for all of our calls because people were there. People were they want to be there. Um, we've had blue car training with Mark Levin, which is sort of like the 
newest response training to in you know, hydro on the scene. Uh, we've got a pump ops class coming, so more people are trained in pump operations, we've got hazmat coming. Um, you know, to address some of the accusations that came forth, he was not asked to resign about the grant. That was about 5% of the issue that we had. 95% was the harassment and really he treated everybody. Um, the issue with the grant was ironed out in, in 10 minutes by myself and the treasurer. It wasn't that big of a deal. It was a small problem, but that was that. Um, as far as our community day, I'm just addressing some of the things that we brought up. Brought up. My back was so sore on Sunday after community day, I had to lay in bed all day from picking kids up and putting them in the truck. Now, I'm not the most, you know, Number of person, but it, we spent the day showing kids what's going on. You know, showing the trucks, showing them. They, anyone comes out of the station at any time, come was there, they take the kids and show them around, you know, give them a fire hat and just sort of make, try to make a good impression on them. Um, as far as, you know, having the borough's interest in mind, when Bill was the active chief, he had the interest of the borough in mind. There's no doubt about it. Public safety, uh, first and foremost. But after he resigned, he had covert meetings with all of the other fire departments in the area, and specifically for the reason of telling them not to respond to the bridge bill for mutual aid costs. If that's having the community's interest in mind, that's not undermining the fire department, undermining public safety. I don't know what it is. Um, you know, he's told lots of people, some are in this room, that he's going to stand by and watch us fail. He's going to do whatever it takes. Um, but all the meetings we've had with the Public Safety Board, they know the validity of what we're talking about. Um, there's also an overspending issue. If we're volunteering, we try to raise money any way we can. Um, it's not the easiest thing. It costs a lot to keep the fire department rolling and keep the, the equipment going and training and, equip and uh, you know, personal protection equipment and everything else we have to get. Um, you know, we had spending freezes and, and, and on the books, in writing, in meetings, on, you know, through the minutes, he would ignore them and just spend money wastefully. Um, he, what he bought was things that were useful to the fire department that we didn't necessarily need. We couldn't afford um, Since he's left, we have a $51,000 increase in our checking account. That's a incredible. Even have fifty thousand dollars in there, let alone a fifty thousand dollar increase in a matter of three and a half months. Um, <clears throat> upon resigning, he quit responding to calls. He was a thorough, well, he is a thorough employee, and he would be the first one on scene any call when he was the chief. After he lost that position, he stood idly by, watching with my own eyes. We had a, a fire call on uh, Coolidge by Walker Road Road. He was 100 yards away in his truck, sitting in his truck, watching us to criticize us. Never once tried to respond. Thank God it wasn't an act of fire, and that was trapped. But he wants to stand by and watch us fail. Um, yeah, he's undermining the safety of, of the uh, the safety of, of the township or the borough um, by repeatedly, you know, we've endured indecent, profane, physical, and verbal abuse in public by members of his family. That's unheard of. That's, that's completely ridiculous. We've taken a high road this whole time. We've never said anything about what's going on other than talking to the borough and asking for advice. Um, we, you know, we're at this point now where we just we would like him to, we would have liked him to resign his chief and stay on and be a firefighter and pass on all the knowledge he has. We gave him but, an opportunity. Pardon me? We sent him a letter that said that he's no longer allowed to be a member, so you never gave him that well, opportunity. Well, that was after he's. Well, Just I, I, gave you, I gave you the. I forwarded you the politeness to not speak when I'm speaking. Not quite personal. And we did. He ended up getting thrown out, or he ended up getting um, expelled, was the word that was in the bylaws for disclosing all of our internal business to everybody, all the other chiefs, all the other departments. Uh, you know, he's called the county, EM, or county emergency disaster uh, official <coughs> telling him to try to plead his case. Uh, I don't, you know, we don't know what to do at this point, but, you know, 
we are just tired of the harassment. That's why he was <clears throat> asked to resign. Um, as far as uh, you know, we're one hundred and ten percent committed to this community. We are day and night, no matter what weather it is, what the call is, in the middle of you know your anniversary dinner, at Christmas, we go to Thanksgiving dinner, we go to a call. And Bill did too. That's, I'm never going to take any of that away from him. That's our job. That's what we sign on for when we ask to be a volunteer fire department. Um, but we had, we had members when he was the chief not responding to calls because he was going to be there. Now it's completely different. Um, you know, everyone is, our turnout as far as the amount of people coming to calls is up. The speed at which we get there is up. Um, much more people coming to training. You know, all that. So it, it is a new mindset and a new, uh, a new feeling, let's say, at the department. Um, in closing, I just wanted to reiterate that the citizens of Wordswell that we're 110 percent committed to providing a safer, better level of service to our community that you guys expect and deserve, as well as providing mutual aid to neighboring communities in time of need. Uh, the direction of our fire department is more clear and concise than it's ever been in our 100 plus year history. Um, no mutual aid agreements were broken. We've actually added companies to our responses. Um, so there's actually more coverage now by more people than we ever had before, uh, despite the lobbying to not respond. Um, they've all taken the high road also in the departments and continue to do so. So thank you very much for your time. If anybody has any questions, an open house, you guys can come down. Ask whatever questions you want to anybody, take a tour of the building, what have you. Um, we just wanted to come and stay our case to try to alleviate everybody's uh, misconception that, you know, that somebody's not going to respond or they're not going to be trained. We're all the same people we were when he was there, we're minus one person. So um, no one person you know, makes and breaks in the organization. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate all the words spoken on, for, on behalf of Bill, you know, on behalf of the fire department. Um, you know, on, as far as council, I just wanted to you know, just, just make some things perfectly clear. I mean, there is nobody up here that will argue on what Bill has done for this community over the years. He's a personal friend of mine. I've known him for a long time since high school. Um, this is not a personal matter. I have known Ray not that long. Um, so this is not a personal issue. Nobody's going to argue what what kind of firefighter Bill is, um, but this is an internal matter amongst the fire department. If you go to any other community in their volunteer fire department, their commissioners and councilmen in their town are not going to dictate who is running their department. They have nominations at the beginning, beginning of the year. They nominate who their chief is, who attend, all that stuff, and the membership votes on we're you know I've talked to Bill I am not happy with what happened um, if, if there was a better way this could happen we would have loved to seen it um, we would have loved to see Bill still in the organization but again that is something amongst the, the volunteer fire fire firefighters in our community you know, these are all of them are members who volunteer their time hours hundreds of hours of training risk their lives to protect our community and that should not be discounted one day. So that's all I'm going to say is on behalf of council. I don't know if, if Ray, if you had anything that you wanted to put. I'll wait for my report. Okay. And uh, with that said, Bob Fry. Thank you. Uh, you uh, will have my check tomorrow. <laughs> I suggest that everybody else here that can does the same thing. Uh, I just wanted to mention that I know that uh, members of council, myself, and uh, all the officials in Bridgeville, I want to say good things for the people and the businesses in Bridgeville. Uh, we, we differed in some ways on how to accomplish that. But uh, I think the last time I was here, I mentioned that because of the, uh, the fact that people in Bridgeville are paying 50% more of their yearly income, which is comparatively modest to the municipality for taxes compared to all the other communities <coughs> around us. I, I keep emphasizing to try to rebuild 
the central business district to draw more businesses in there. And obviously, don't turn Baldwin Street into a flood plain that seems to be no, I agree to that, but I wanted to mention to you, in terms of uh, parking in Bridgeville, uh, the parking authority can't afford to build, in my opinion, a, a parking garage. It costs $40,000 per space to build a parking garage. So the only places where we can build parking that can help the business district is some of the empty spaces. I just wanted to show you this. This is one of my drawings. This is a borough drawing. This shows the, the area behind the... Uh, our Arco, Arco, uh, really plays horses in the song. I'm going to just leave this here so you can take a look at that. But I think that rather than, rather than borrowing money or, or as a bond for some other not quite a significant project, I think we should get together and do something like that. Well, does somebody own that property that you have that picture of? Oh, absolutely. Two, uh, two, two, two people. And are they willing to sell it right now? It doesn't matter for so, I mean, so you're, I, just saying, you're just saying to take it from them? He, well, I, I'm asking a question. He, 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 he asked, get he asked the same question the meeting a month ago, and I gave you the same answer. <clears throat> and which one's that? When the parking authority or for our council needs a piece of land for the public welfare, they don't take it. They buy it at a fair market price. And that's what should be done to that property. The, the people have been talking about that for but they're not years. willing to sell it right now, correct? Right. Is anyone talk to them about it? I guess the party was talk to them. Okay. okay. But I want to emphasize my point. The public comes first. Not a private property owner whose land they're going to get their fair market value for. I want you to mention this. The importance of, tra of, transport, of transforming that land into a 50 or 60 car parking lot is this. The backs of all those buildings, the Dreon building, the Harmuth building, and I forget what the other building is called, will become storefronts facing the parking lot. And also the backs, the lower level of the uh, Arco Realty building, I forget who owns that now, would become storefronts as well. And also that parking lot is also to serve the stores on Washington Avenue. There's only an eight foot difference between the sidewalk and Washington Avenue the level of that parking lot, it would be it would be a tremendous uh, boom for the commercial for the tax revenue. Okay, thanks very much. Thanks, hey, thank you. property rights, and as you look at liberty, there's a wonderful thing about limited government. A government doesn't control everything. It doesn't. It doesn't control our fire department. It makes great deference to the property owners when it comes to acquiring parking. 
We have a limited government. Today on your agenda, you are planning to pass an ordinance regarding camping in our little borough. It wouldn't seem to be a very controversial ordinance, and it probably won't be. I have every expectation that all of you will move second and pass as quickly as possible. I rise, probably alone, to point out that this is how liberty is lost. This is how government becomes bigger. A great deal of that ordinance is in the definitions of what is camping and the borough manager. And basically, if your kids are going to be in your backyard for more than two days, with a special event, you can go to the borough manager, and if he or she is accepting of it, you get your permit. So this will become probably another law that we really don't intend to live by. Like many laws on our books right now, that many members of our council, including me as a former member, do not follow. Because after all, we really didn't mean it when we passed those laws. Okay, if our families want to camp in our backyards for three days or whatever, that's going to be okay. Unless somebody else complains, in which case maybe it won't be okay. But that's how liberty is lost. Now, you may say, Mr. de Blasio, you seem like an anarchist. Mr. No. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Palmer. <laughs> no. We easily give up our freedom to go through the little red light. I gratefully give up that freedom to go through the red light so that I can go quickly through the green light. It's a very fair deal. But this ordinance is not good law. This ordinance, this ordinance is ill-conceived. When it gets to be five pages long, you know it isn't easy to enforce or implement. Okay? It should not be passed. It does not address a major problem in our community. Okay? For the extent that we look at it as basically trying to criminalize homelessness, you might say, aha, well that's pretty good. If there are homeless people, we should get rid of them. Well, that's really not a cool idea because, after all, they happen to be human beings too. And one should have some compassion for their fellow, fellow human beings. The tyranny of the majority should not be allowed, and I would hope it wouldn't be. So, I make my comments and my plea for you to reconsider that ordinance. And I thank you for your time. <laughs> Mr. Asnick, I know you're on mute. Well, first, I just thought this was the sign in paper. <laughs> <laughs> so, my apologies, but. After listening to you guys, I just came here to first listen to the people. If you guys don't know me, I'm Liz Sarasnik, Jason Sarasnik's daughter, if you don't know him. But after listening to what you guys had to say, I actually had a couple concerns and some facts I have found. So about the building and the parking garage, actually, uh, parking authority pays the person who owns the land for what they're putting on there. I know this because I do invoices for my dad and parking authority pays them once a month for their land. So it does matter for the people who are living there and the residents who are living there because it's their home too and it can't be taken over by some parking authority. And second off, I just have a question. I don't know if this is question time or not, but... Um, no question is, is dumb, so go ahead and have uh, how's the progress on the Blockland Park coming since the devastation from the flood last year? I just want to get an update on that. We're still waiting, like I said, we're still waiting for the permits for the ballpark. We, want to, we have a grant that's coming in and we're waiting before we can actually initiate the grant. We need the permits to actually do the work. I mean, they've been, the public works have been, been cutting the grass trying to keep it clean, um, but the actual ballpark is unusual. Um, but the rest of the park, I don't know, that's something that we can 
we've already got a grant coming in to redo the bathroom and also getting the ball field cleared out and eventually when the work does get done they're gonna to have to access the park access to get to where they have to finish the work. So the reason is to talk about opening the thing up before anything happens. The guys are going back and forth to the ball field a couple months ago they tried burning and all that number of the complaints from that percent clearing because of the smoke. So now we're trying to figure out how we put prices to all the stuff out of it. It's astronomical. So we're trying to figure out some way to get rid of the timber and the garbage and debris. So it's all wood based. And there's thoughts of maybe pushing it up the hill somehow and covering it with dirt. So there's all that idea. So that's basically the reason why the park's going on. Already. Just wanted to ask. I thank you for your efforts, and I also want to thank the original fire department for all their work. You guys deserve it. So everybody, give us a round of applause. Just one last. Can I ask just so the grant is not going to pay to get rid of the debris on the on the scene? I don't believe so. That really wasn't part of the grant. That's that that was part part. basically it was an active <coughs> two phases. Back. They had to put in the tent. Some of the Second part was parking, parking lot shot. And the rest the restroom was a separate property lot and basically other improvements to the park. And the, and the tennis court, you know, fix the tennis court? No. Well, there is an all purpose court down there. It could either be tennis, volleyball. That's, that was put in the first. Right. Yeah. And so then we have the there. skate. Escape park, that was part of it all. Uh, John Duncan, I don't know if you're on there. Oh, thanks. Uh, John Duncan, 120 Warner. Uh, I just was looking for an update on Warner Street where the yeah. street is falling down over the hill. Right out there. The road's getting worse. It's out. And the last I heard was that they were applying for a grant. Yeah, there is. Uh, we, we, we haven't gotten word of the grant yet. It's supposed to be the grant is to cover that. Um, right. Is it? Is it they are awarding. We have not got to Yeah, my big, biggest concern is I know I think they're going to start the next year the intersection on 79. Right. And, I think the traffic is going to be horrendous coming through there. Right. That road just is getting worse and worse. I, I, I apologize, but you know, it's still we're still in the same position we were before. Okay. Uh, it's, I, I mean, somebody's just going to end up going you know, over the hill there pretty soon. I mean, winter and spring, we're sure. by another year. It's going to just like how much the fence for it. was on the list, I know, it was applied for in the spring. I just want to keep it on the radar. Yeah. We'll look into it. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. And uh, finally, Joel Akis. Last thing. Okay. <laughs> no problem. All right. Uh, on to uh, business with the council. Um, motion to uh, borough council to approve the minutes of July 8, 2019. Regular, minute, regular meeting as submitted. I so move. Nino, put yourself. I second it. And Virginia Schneider, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, all those opposed? Yes. I'll abstain. All those in favor? Yes. I'll abstain. Yeah. I'm <laughs> sure. Yeah, I just did. <laughs> exactly. Oh. Uh, motion to the Borough Council to approve the August 2019 bill. I second. Uh, Bruce and Joe Gucci, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Motion to borough council to approve the August 16, 2330 of 2019 and September 6, 2019 payrolls. Second. And Nino, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, motion to borough council regarding, regarding ordinance number 1010, amending chapter 21 of its code of ordinance, streets and sidewalks to add provision 
banning camping on public and private property and providing penalties <coughs> for violations thereof. All moves. Uh, Joe? Second. And uh, Joe Klesno, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Aye. Uh, make a note that uh, Virginia opposed. Motion carries. A motion of the Borough Council regarding resolution number 2019-08 as per PennDOT requirements 1.10.4 signs and banners across state highways. The resolution designating the intention of Bridgeville Borough to place one banner across State Route 50 to be installed August 15, 2019, removed September 9, 2019, for Our Lady of Victory. Uh, Maronite Catholic Church Food Festival will be held September 6, 7, 8, 2019. Uh, Bruce? Second. And Virginia, all those in favor? Uh, we're going to have a lot of street signs across our road. Yeah. Um, borough, uh, motion to Borough Council regarding the bid of $82.24 per ton for rock salt bulk delivery or pickup at the mine or storage area from Cargill Incorporated as submitted by, it's made to the Shaycock Purchasing Line. Is that Shaycock? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 And Joe, Cosmo, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, motion Borough Council. Regarding the remittal of current estimates number four and final, green light go, adaptive sign upgrades to water technical service and incorporate in the amount of $44,799.14. Estimates have been reviewed and approved by engineer sites. Uh, the adaptive system has been online and active since May 2019. I'll move. Uh, Joe Ritchie. Second. Joe Plaza. All those in favor? Uh, all those opposed? Motion carries. Motion to the Borough Council regarding the refund of real estate tax due to change in assessment. Year 2018, lot block 255-K-62, the amount of $149.56 to Armando and Lillian de la Piazza. I'll move. Uh, Joe. And uh, Bruce. I think that'll be asked two words, isn't it? No. Yeah. Uh, all those in favor? Uh, all those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, motion to accept and pay commissions due to the 2000, I'm sorry, the July 2019 real estate tax collector. So, uh, Bruce? Second. And Joe Lucci, all those in favor? Uh, motion carries. Uh, Motion to accept the May 2019 financial report. I'll move. Joe Reducci. Second. And Virginia Schneider. All those in favor? Uh, all those opposed? Motion carries. Motion to accept the June 2019 financial report. I'll second. I'll move. Uh, Joe Reducci. Second. And Bruce Calarucci. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Motion to accept the July 2019 police report. So moved. Uh, Bruce Calducci. I second it. And Virginia Schneider. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. And motion to accept the August 2019 zoning report. So moved. Uh, Joe Closmo. Second. And Nina Pichichelli. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Um, administration report. Uh, Bruce. Uh, finance. Uh, as far as our uh, normal expenses that we've paid out this, uh, this past month, uh, we also had to have some uh, software upgrades in regards to some of the computers. Um, we had the final payment for the Chartier's bathrooms, and then we had uh, um, a little bit of an expense on uh, the sweeper repair. So, uh, But uh, that was the first major repair for the piece of equipment. So uh, I've been told that, that should be going forward. Uh, other than that, it was a, a normal uh, normal month, but uh, unfortunately those tax bills have been out and we're hoping that those uh, payments come in 
Uh, just a reminder, by the end of this month, that uh, is still the discount period. Uh, Parks and Recreation, Joe. I just got a short comment on Chartier's Park. Uh, we've been discussing flood damage since the flood. If you've been down Chartier's Park, you'll notice the Jersey barriers along the roadway border. And the great. Bill Bob's telling me he's moved those things two or three times. Eventually, we're going to have a road and we're going to pick the trail. Sooner or later, it, it, it's a very expensive fix for what I can tell. So that's something to keep on. Hopefully, the middle burger is supposed to be back on it. The road is almost. Is that something that we take a look at to see? Like, is that fine for screen? We were asking them already, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah I appreciate it. it it's, uh, it's going to involve driving the sheets, the piling or I think that's one of the ones that we for a grant. All right, that was run. Sounds good for this round to try to improve these projects. One thing I noticed, like, I guess the folks at the uh, food warehouse place on the other side, they put heavy rip rack <coughs> over on that side. And when the water comes down the creek, it does that straight through the park. I don't know if that was what's on the other side. Might have pushed it over a little bit, but uh, it, 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 that's all. Thank you. Uh, Public Works. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, everybody has a uh, report, my report on your uh, back over there. But I can tell you, we've been doing a lot of patching. Uh, we, a lot, a lot of patching. Uh, it, we, there, some of the alleys are very bad. We've been doing a lot, a lot of that. And cutting grass, of course. Always a cats. Why don't you slow down? No, you can't. It's about another mile. Yeah. <laughs> That's all. Thank you. Uh, Bill Henderson is in Florida on a new job. So we'll get his report next month. And Mayor Copeland. Arkansas. She's in Arkansas. My grandson's first birthday. There you go. That kept us up. Please, Chief Chad King. Thanks, Council President. Um, Mayor's absent, but on her behalf, she asked that I just encourage donations for the Memorial Monument donation. That's, uh, I believe it's a granite stone. Mr. Michael Hoes, that the American Legion is donating to the National Cemetery of the Alleghenies. There's information on that online. Or Mr. Michael Hoes will have a bunch of information back here in the corner if you have questions. As far as police department business, um, this weekend, this Saturday, the 17th, we have the Annie Baumgarten 7th Annual Motorcycle Run. It's for uh, child safety. It's at the Last Shot Lounge. Um, registration, if you're a biker, starts at 11 a.m. Kickstands go up at 1. And if you're not a biker, you can still join the festivities at 4.30 or 5 p.m. for dinner. And they have Chinese auction and raffles. All proceeds go to the Annie Baumgarten Child Safety Fund, which benefits Bridgeville area children. Thank you. Thank you, Chad. Uh, Tom? Thanks, here, my written yes. for everyone. I think you guys read this. All right. Uh, for our engineer, Kevin Brett? Uh, yes, we did submit our re written report date of August 9th. Uh, this is in a package, uh, just a couple updates. Um, contract documents did come in from the contractor. We did send them over to the to sign the road program, and uh, we will schedule the pre construction meeting. Uh, and get that project started over the next 30 days. Um, we are looking uh, for next month to have the GEDF grant application prepared um, to group all the projects currently. Um, uh, we've been talking about uh, some of the uh, flood areas. Uh, the Marshall Street Wall project is a potential. Um, the uh, park project uh, with the wall and the flooding down there, um, potentially the thing down the fall. Um, because that's going to be a very substantial cost as well. So we're going to get three or four projects, group them into one, and you know, have that one as your GDF application uh, for stormwater. Um, so if there's any other ones that you want to see, it's an approximate expense of that. Just out of curiosity. For the uh, culvert cleaning? Mm -hmm. Just all three. All of them? Uh, the GDF <coughs> has to be above 500000 um, in order to submit. Uh, so I think if you group all those projects together, you're going to have a project somewhere between 500000 and a million. Um, also, to include with that is I did look at 1419 Fire Hill Road complaint. 
and uh, I thought a little bit more about this, and I guess another one to include. Um, this is a complaint about stormwater coming off of some streets that were paved a few years back. There's no storm system in that area, um, but it comes down onto a county road and runs along county right away. Um, so this would be, be a project to submit um, and get some support letters from the county potentially, since part of the work would be on county right away for the discharge point and to fix the erosion that's been occurring there, um, and then put a storm system up um, within the Borough Street. Um, so that would be one of the projects. This one alone is hundred thousand dollars of stormwater work to be completed. So um, we would take a uh, package of those and group them. Um, and maybe even something in the park that you already have other grants in place for, um, and then up with seven fifty to a million of the project. A project so. uh, applying for a grant, something like that, that takes six months to uh, a year, correct? Yeah, that money would come in. Um, it's uh, first part of September, they're due mid September, uh, roughly, and just over the GBF in the last three weeks. Um, that is something that does have money in it. Um, so the awards would come sometime late in the year to our next year, and then uh, be a project that has to be completed in 2020. And then if you don't get funded the first round, we have found success in resubmitting for the next round. So, um, but that one is one that opens every year to eight months. Thank you. And that's all. Excuse, Kevin, did you, excuse me, Mr. Chairman, did you ever look at uh, water from Ellis to Bower Hill? You know, in front of, uh, uh, it's, uh, this is it. Yeah, you can look at Yeah, that's I understand it. it's, uh, yeah, that it's not in our budget at, at present time. Correct. I think what I'd like to do over there, uh, as a public work, if they can remove some of that gravel, you know, with the water, you got a gravel all over his driveway, his property. That much I could do it on my own. I'm not sure that it's public work to remove that. Yeah, that's something the public works to fill it in. And yeah, I'm thinking about that to maybe look a curve or something. I don't know. If you want to take another look and give me some idea, sure. so I can pass it the public court, okay. uh, something temporary until next year. Yeah, we can call it after the meeting. I yes. Give you a suggestion. Yes, I appreciate it. Thank you. Yes. Any other questions? Thank you. Uh, Fire Chief uh, Ray Mustang. Thank you, Council President. Uh, in the month of July, we had uh, 58 incidents uh, in Bridgeville, or for Bridgeville Fire Department, four of which were building fires, two mutual aid and two here in the borough, both small, fortunately. All, actually, all of them were, were fairly small. Um, and 17 medicals that we assisted Southbridge with, and then numerous other calls of various dispatches. Um, so that is our report. As uh, I just want to make mention a couple of things. Um, in regards to earlier statements on the whole subject dealing with the fire department and bill um, there is absolutely no question that bill has done amazing things for this borough for this fire department uh, countless time and hours that he's put in time away from his family uh, there's there's no question of that um, at, at this particular point we're, we're not going to elaborate as to why the changes were made um, that that may change in the future uh, we don't want it to but we want to concentrate on the future and we want to continue to do everything that we've done for 116 118 years whatever it is uh, for this for this borough so rest assured that the commitment of each and every one of these members is just as strong if not stronger today than it was when bridgeville volunteer fire department started here in this borough thank you uh south bridge ems Dan miller uh, hopefully you got stats today by email, so we'll get those out to you regularly now. Um, otherwise, no report. Uh, Bridgeville Historical Society, Mary White. Thank, Thank you. And you have to say this, we have the best fire department and the best police department all around. And EMS. And EMS. And EMS. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to first of all thank the fire department for having something on the 29th of September. So our meeting has been moved back to the 22nd of September. So all of us have to go to the fire department that day, the 29th. So 
we have a lot of things we're working on, but probably the old stickers are going to be the best right now. Uh, and that is our programs actually start the last Tuesday of September. They will be held at the fire department. And I know the first one is about presidents in the past, what they used to win elections. Uh, we'll see about that one. The next one I don't want to go to, it's about the, uh, in the end of October, the very, very, um, how should I say this? A house I wouldn't want to live in because you have all kind of spooks running <laughs> through your house. Uh, he was a former, what was he? He was with Allegheny County. Uh, it's his house in Griffith that is full of special, scary stuff Happy Halloween. Um, then at the end of November, uh, the last program for 2019. And we do not have a program in the month of December. And I have to announce this now because I have put it on your calendar now. Please, all of you, all of you. The bake sale that we do twice a year is October 17th, a Thursday, and the 18th, a Friday, held right over here in the old railroad station. Thank you very much. Good evening. Um, I just wanted to stop in tonight and share some updates about the library and what we have accomplished this summer. Um, so this summer we were able to offer 176 programs, um, which is up from 166 in 2018. So not a huge increase, but a little bit of an increase. I am happy to report that in comparison, last year throughout the summer, we had just under 2,000 people attending programs. This year, we have just over 3,000 people. So there was a much bigger increase there. Um, which I think speaks to the quality of both the library staff and the programs that we are continuing to offer. Um, I can say we've had a well-rounded slate of programming for all ages. Um, one thing we were particularly proud of this summer was our Mission Space program. It was offered two different sessions for uh, children in grades one through three and then in grades three through five. It was a six-week program. They would come back each week and it focused on a different science or math skill that was presented through the lens of the space program, as this was the 50th um, anniversary of the moon landing. Um, so we had a lot of great stuff happening. We also off, um, hosted two Chartiers Valley students as part of the Learn and Earn program, um, which places teens in environments where they can gain some valuable workforce development um, as they move forward in their future careers as well. Um, looking forward, we're planning for this fall. September is again Love Your Library Month. Um, that is a countywide initiative that is encouraged by the Jack Buncher Foundation. Throughout September, any donations that the library brings in are received a prorated match, um, so that money goes even further. So we'll be doing some special things for that throughout the month, and it also September is National Library Card Sign Up Month. So thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I don't think there's anybody from Bridgewell Parking Authority. Um, planning Commission. Well, I have to congratulate the, uh, our engineer, Dan I mean, He did extraordinary stuff. Uh, you were there, yeah. Mr. Chairman. I'll tell you what, I was so happy about what's coming. I mean, he went all the for his 500 years. Okay. But, well, we'll be, we're not going to be. <laughs> but, <laughs> but that's a problem. Somebody will. That's right. But he went to really, he made it one of the best I ever heard for many times. The last thing, Mr. Chairman, you have to excuse me. I don't want the media to think that Bridgeville is not protected. You know, there's many rumors here. Bridgeville is well protected. So don't sleep well. Don't sleep well. Don't sleep, don't sleep well. That's right. Don't sleep well. Because you are protected. Where things went on both sides, and when things went bad, you know, it is, what are you going to do? Something like that, it hurts. We are protected. Trust me. Michelle, do you have anything from Lori? 
No problem. Uh, old business, new business. Wait, so, go. So, go ahead. Good. Okay. No, no, I'm going last. All right. Am I going to steal your thunder? No, no. Thanks. Okay. Um, just as a reminder, we've been uh, from the Bridgeville South Fayette Rotary, we've been advertising the chili cook off. Uh, to be honest, we've had a huge response already, and it's only uh, August, and it's going to be on October 13th. It is an away Steeler game at night, so we hope to see everybody between <laughs> noon and four. Uh, to have uh, last year, we had 27 chilies to taste, and I want to say a thousand people, maybe a little under. We're more this year. We want more than that this year. Uh, the money that the Rotary raises goes to a lot of different good local programs here in the community, and we'd love to be able to do more. So um, uh, please put that on your calendar. We'd love to have everyone there. Um, and then I received a message from the uh, Southwest Communities Chamber of Commerce the Executive Director. I say that fast three times. Um, she, first of all, uh, if any of you know her, she had her baby on August 2nd, a little boy. And uh, she wanted to publicly uh, thank every the public uh, for their support on the car raffle this year. It was very successful and it, it truly helps the chamber uh, out to be able to help the community uh, businesses, especially in the area. Um, before we adjourn the council, I need uh, executive session in like five minutes, tops. Uh, I want to thank Sue Means, our Allegheny County Councilwoman, for being here. Every time she comes, you know it's going to be a long meeting. <laughs> right, thank you very much for coming here. And also, um, tomorrow, our, our borough manager, Lori Collins, is having uh, surgery tomorrow. And I want everybody to keep her in your thoughts. Um, it's, a, it's something she's not looking forward to at all. Uh, so she's going to be out for a while. But um, I want to make sure to send her good, good, good thoughts her way. So. That being said, is there a motion to adjourn? So, so. All those in favor? All those opposed? Thank you guys. Thanks everybody. Something that you can talk about. No, I'm